Why is it so dark around here? Has it always been this dark? Will it always be this dark? Looking back, there's always been a real and serious darkness problem, figuratively and literally. No wonder people have a, such a hard time seeing. No wonder good life decisions are so elusive and difficult to come by. I mean, how are any of us supposed to do better than we've ever done if we're all groping around in the dark like this? But you know, this is exactly how it was in the beginning as well. There wasn't a lot going on. Actually, there was nothing going on in fact. But many people assume that things were pretty good before God got that creation ball rolling. Peaceful, like a dark, quiet morning with a a warm, good cup of coffee. But that is not at all the case. In its first few words, the Bible tells us that the earth was formless and empty. It was a void, like that emptiness you feel in the pit of your stomach when someone you know and love dies. Like there's been a disturbance in the force and something is missing. It's gone and it's not coming back. In the next few words, God's book only adds to this by telling us that darkness was over the surface of the deep. In the beginning, there was darkness? Before any human existed, we started in darkness? Not something that you and I contributed to in any way, but a pre-existing condition. Dr. Tony Evans likens the reality of this moment in time to a garbage dump, the domain of a fallen angel, that cast-down devil. There was chaos and disorder. This was worse than nothing. Not much of anything for God to work with, that's for sure. Certainly not the foundation or the building blocks for a bright and hopeful future. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you're sort of looking around to assess things? To decide what you want to do? To determine if there's any real potential? To figure out if you're going to get involved? In the beginning, what God had before him was a complete and utter write-off. Not a blank canvas, but a broken slate. This wasn't anything that anyone would want to move forward with, ever. But have you ever been in one of those moments and you felt like something was pushing you forward? Even though it made no sense. Even though it was beyond risky, but you truly felt compelled by something outside of yourself to proceed, to move into the pitch black. As God floated there above the darkness and the chaos, the emptiness and the void, and over all that brutal nothingness, he spoke one Simple, creative word. And instantly chaos shifted to order. Where there was nothing, all of a sudden there was something. A million somethings, in fact. And none of these somethings were inferior or deficient in any way. Nothing destined for that trash heap. But instead they were good, perfect, just as God had intended. <laughs> Wow. When I think about that, you know, it seems like most of my life is about busting my butt to barely creep ahead. When I yell with all my might, my kids barely look up from their devices and virtually never move swiftly and immediately to action. When I think about doing all that I can and giving all that I have and seeing so little forward progress, I am envious and inspired by someone who can do so much with just a word. There was this one part that was especially great. Something totally new and different from anything that anyone had ever seen before. An upturn, 
a change that filled the future with limitless possibility. In all that emptiness, in all that darkness, God spoke, and for the first time ever, there was light. Everything was clear. Everyone could see the perfect picture of God's goodness. Hope, faith, joy, and love. All good things, very good things. But in and of themselves, they were not enough. Not enough to push back much darkness anyway. I mean, look at how dark it is everywhere. But this promised baby who was born, this Messiah who came to save people from their sin, he was different. That is what our final candle, the Christ candle, represents. Wow, that's different, right? Is that better? (laughs) Mark thinks so. Everyone else is like, I don't know, I've been sleeping for the last hour. It's kind of dark in here, right? I came to church at Christmas and I got a little nap in. Um, You know, after all that time stumbling and fumbling around in darkness, it's hard to determine if this new thing is real. That makes sense, doesn't it? Or if it's just something like everything else that offers us a little bit of false hope, but it's going to fail sooner or later. There's this beautiful passage found in the first chapter of John's gospel that covers this. It speaks to this exact thing. And I'd I'd just love to read it for you uh, piece by piece. It comes from uh, John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. And here's the first chunk. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Now, notice in those verses that Jesus was with God in the beginning. In all the creative processes, God made everything. Jesus was there. He was actually a part of that. And it was more than him just being with God. The text also says that he was God. He was the light of all mankind, the light of the world. But again, it would have been really normal and common for people to wonder, is this going to work? Is this even real? And here's my favorite part of that first little clumping of verses. It ended by saying, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Maybe another way to think about that is this. Every other attempt at light has been snuffed completely out. Haven't we talked about that? All afternoon, right? Everything that's been tried from the beginning of time until this point, none of it worked. This is the only light that has not been overcome, subdued, snuffed out by the pervasive darkness that has plagued the world literally since the beginning. Plagued the world forever. And if you want real, true, can't be wrestled down and won't ever tap out or go out light in your life, this is it, right? This was it. This was the one that God used to fix this problem. He nailed it, (laughs) right? You got to say it like that too. If you don't go up, it doesn't work, right? He nailed it. This baby who was born, whose birth we celebrate at Christmas, solved the darkness problem with perfect light. He nailed it. It finally fixed that. But but he, he nailed more than just that. This baby who came showed us how to live. He is the only one ever to live a perfect life. Did you know that? 
You've not lived a perfect life. I haven't lived a perfect life. If you want to know how to live, if you want to look to an example, don't look to me. Don't look to someone else. Look to Jesus because he's the only one who's ever nailed this. But when we think about that idea of nailing it, there's something else that comes to mind as well, right? He didn't just live for us. He also died for us. And while that in some ways is a loss because death is always a loss, it was also a gain because in dying for us, he solved the sin problem as well, right? He didn't just solve the darkness problem. He solved the sin problem by becoming the perfect once for all sacrifice for every sin that has ever been committed and will ever be committed. And then here's how that passage continues. It says, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testifying concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself, John, was not the light. He only came as a witness to the light. Now this gift, right, the Savior that was promised some 700 years before the birth of Jesus, who was spoken about by all the prophets, John was like a modern day prophet to start the New Testament, who, who like those prophets, testified, he gave this word of testimony that, that this was it, that Jesus was him, this true light. John gave this word of testimony. He bore witness to the light. He was great. He was a great man and he had a powerful and important role, but he was not the light. So think about this. The light has come and it is not us. You aren't the light. I'm not the light. Again, we've talked about this, haven't we? The leaves that Adam and Eve used to cover their nakedness, they may have offered them a moment of hope, but they were dying and doomed from the moment they were picked. They started to die. The, the sacrificial system that, that took place for a huge chunk of the scriptures may have offered hope, but it was broken and incomplete and required animal after animal to die and really fix no problem, right? Just have these little moments of hope. But here's the real sinister one. Sometimes you and I may think, even looking to Jesus, hey, Jesus, thanks so much for showing me the way, but I got this now. No, you don't. You don't got it. I don't got it. None of us have got this. We are not the light. He is the only light that gives and brings life. All other light is false and ineffective. And I wonder tonight if anyone else here is tired of living life in ways and trying things that are completely ineffective. They may offer us a little bit of hope for a small window of time, but in the end, they really don't last. They don't work. They're like duct tape, and they're really not a permanent solution. This is how that passage continues. I love this. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. Now, just like we can resist and, and hold Jesus at arm's length, this has been true of many others. Uh, the text tells us that even his own people rejected him as well. They couldn't see. They were blinded. They, they didn't even recognize him. But many people did recognize him. Many people did receive him. And here's the, the awesome news. You can recognize and receive him as well. And, and I want you to know this. There's not 87 hoops to jump through. There's not a rule book we give you. And, a, and if you can leave here and get it all right and do everything perfectly, then you're in. That's not the way to gain access to this light. In fact, the way to gain access is simple. And it's 100% free 
for us. Here it is. And we heard it in the text. If you believe in and receive the light, you can be a child of God. Now, I, I want to be clear. I don't want it to, to sound too simple. Because when we say those words, believe in, the Greek word there doesn't just mean, I believe I'm getting AirPods for Christmas. I believe my mom loves me. And I believe I'm going to eat a lot of turkey this week. That's not the kind of belief. This is the kind of belief that actually causes us to live differently because we believe this thing. It changes our lives. And so this is the kind of belief you have to take a deep breath and decide that your life is going to be different because of it. It's not just something in your mind or a feeling in your heart. And then receiving is so simple. You know, you can be given the best Christmas gift ever and someone could wrap it just perfectly. But if it sits under the tree and you never get it, you never open it, you don't get to benefit from it. And so if you and I, if, if we simply believe in and receive this gift that God has given us, we're in. We have the light. We have eternal life. Your status as one of God's kids has been restored. And this is true no matter who you are and no matter what you've done. None of that matters. And then here's the last verse. It says, The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father full of grace and truth. You and I, we can see and experience the glory, the grace, and the truth of God through Jesus Christ. But here's my favorite part of the entire passage. John 1.14 says, The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. I love how the message translation says this even better. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. Isn't that great? This is powerful, right? The idea that in, in a world of darkness, true and life-giving light has come and the darkness has not beat it down or pushed it back. It's pervasive. This is for everyone who ever has lived and whoever will live. But it's also personal. It is for you. So hear these words. The light moved here for you. For you. This, God did this for you. But we resist. We're unsure. We, we hold it at arm's length because this is hard stuff. Especially after spending so much time fumbling around and stumbling in the darkness. Because of the darkness, the light can feel foreign. The light can even sometimes feel offensive to us. We're not sure about it. And at this time of year, we're so busy, aren't we? We're distracted by lesser lights and all kinds of activity. But I want you to hear this. Nothing we replace Jesus with ever seems to work. Hey, Ed, come check out my North Star Christmas tree topper at Levitate's. Is this a gummy bear? Yeah, we lost baby Jesus. Hey, check out these LED lights. I have them synced up to a 76-hour all-Christmas music playlist. There's my little Christmas DJ. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you waiting till Christmas is over so you can go buy a new nativity set when they're on sale? Huh? No. No, oh no. We lost baby Jesus like 11 years ago. Is, is baby Jesus always a gummy bear? Oh, uh -huh. no, oh, we trade it out every year. Yeah, like uh, last year it was a uh, tiny troll doll. <laughs> and the year before that we used a uh, dog treat. They were the perfect size, but <laughs> Dalton kept taking them and eating them. You, you mean your dog kept stealing them? No, my son Dalton, he loves those dog treats. Especially the peanut butter ones. There was one year that we used a, uh, a doll head. That was creepy. We, we made a modeling clay, baby Jesus. So the dog took that one too. Um, one year we got desperate and used an ice cube. That was a miss and a mess. 
It just seems like everything we try to replace baby Jesus with never lasts. Say that again. Everything we try to replace baby Jesus with never seems to last. And? And what? Say it again, slowly. Why? Just do it, dulcimo, slowly, do it. I don't understand what's happening. Just do it. This is getting weird. Say it! Fine! But when I'm done saying this, you're going to march in here and you're going to watch my star levitate. I'm fine, 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 fine. Do it. Fine. Everything we try to replace baby Jesus with never seems to... Oh, yep, there it is. Okay. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. So good, right? Nothing we try to replace Jesus with ever seems to last. None of it works. It, it, it's incredible how much we all try to do that. One of my closest friends very recently told me after decades, his brother, after inviting him to church and trying to, to share with him personally, after decades, his brother finally accepted Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. His brother has finally received the life that only comes from the light of God. And, and so after all this time, he said, I asked my brother, what made you do this finally? You know, I mean, you've been on the planet many, 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 many decades. Um, and here was his answer. He said, because someone finally told me in a way that made sense to me, in a way that I could hear it and receive it. And I wonder if for some of you, if this talk tonight about light and darkness has maybe helped you to see what Christmas is truly all about in a way that you could hear it and receive it. And it's really just this simple. If you believe in and receive the light, you too can be a child of God. But, but what, Rob, why would you do that? Why would I do that? Why would anyone do that? Well, we've been talking about this all month because he is the way in a manger. He's not just a way, he is the one and only way. And that term, that term comes uh, from a passage of scripture where Jesus is talking to his disciples, his closest followers. And, and the, he says to them, I'm going to go on ahead of you and I'm going to prepare a place for you. And then afterwards, you're going you're gonna to come there as well. You will follow me. And, and one of his followers says, well, Jesus, if you're going to go ahead and you're not here with us, how in the world are we going to know the way? And to that, Jesus says this really simple but pro profound thing. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Jesus is the one and only way to God. He is the light of the world. See, Christmas is not at all about guilt and gifts. It's not about all those lesser lights that we roll out and then we box up and pack away as soon as everything's done. It's about God sending the greatest gift ever to solve the longest standing problem in the history of the world, this darkness problem. And he did this for you so that if you are tired, if you're tired of being overcome by darkness and fighting that thing that nothing else works, you can have Light. You can have life. This is what Christmas is all about. And, and I don't know anyone who wouldn't want that, right? Well, who, anyone who wouldn't want light in life over darkness. So again, I don't know about you, but I am tired of solutions in my life that are like duct tape that don't work. You don't have to stay stuck in darkness. God has offered you light and life, and you can choose that. Would you do me a favor? In the seat pocket in front of you is one of these cards. It's this, this uh, beautiful peachy color. Can you just pull it out? If you, don't, if you don't want to keep it, you can put it back afterwards. But can you just pull it out? I want you to look at it with me. On the one side, it says, I have decided to follow Jesus. And for some of you, you may have made that decision a long time ago. On the other side, there's a few little check boxes. The top one says this, today I accepted Jesus for the first time. Maybe there's some of you here in this place 
that have never heard this message in a way that made sense to you, that you felt like you could, could receive it, could accept it. And maybe today's that day you're like, wow, I don't want to be in darkness. I don't want to stay trapped in darkness. I sh- sure I want the light. And, and so maybe today's that day for you where for the first time you would say yes to Jesus. The second little checkbox is today I recommit my life to Jesus. For some of you, you decided to follow Jesus, but somewhere along the way, you've kind of gotten bumped off the road a little bit. You haven't really been doing it too well. And maybe today's a day where you're saying, God, I, I want to I re-up. I want to refocus my life and I want to live for you more effectively and in greater ways. And then there's a third one there. For some of you, you're maybe like, I, I don't really know. I, you know, I, I'm curious. Maybe I have some questions. And that third box says, I'm curious about accepting Jesus as my Savior, but I still have some questions. And so I want to pray for us. The band's going to perform a song, and then we're going to sing a closing song. And I just want to encourage you, if you want to make this prayer your own, if you want to take any of these steps, I just want to encourage you, in these next number of minutes, would you, would you just check one of those boxes? We've had a number of people do this already over our, our first few Christmas gatherings. Uh, one person even checked they wanted to accept Jesus, but didn't want us to know their name, phone number, email. So that was all blank. You know what? It doesn't matter. Um, but if God is speaking to you, would you listen to him and would you respond? And so, Father, today, I just want to thank you so much. God, I thank you that, that we don't have to stay stuck in darkness. God, that, that we, can, we can accept and we can receive and we can live in the true light that gives life both now and forever. And God, today, we just want to confess we've messed things up. God, we have, have lived life our way and it has not worked as well as we wanted or hoped. But God, I thank you that you sent your son to show us how to live and, and ultimately to die for us so that we could be forgiven of our sin and have eternal life both now and forever. God, I thank you for the gift of light. I thank you for the gift of, of life God, I thank you that we don't have to be a part of Team Darkness. We can join Team Light, and we can make that decision right now. God, I thank you so much for the gift of Emmanuel. God, that you came here for us, to be with us. Help us to join you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.